Hi, Stephen. Uh, I've decided I think I'm going to stay with this, uh, this lighting setup and this setup overall for uh, the three or four segments I'm going to do on Transcendence in Dreams. Uh, the quality was a little better, uh, I noticed, and the quality has been a little bit of an issue for me from time to time. And, uh, and as I was getting ready to post it, I really thought the Symphony of Souls uh, is a nice backdrop for this topic, so, uh, so I'm going with this. Uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, give you another uh, Transcendent Dream today as an example of the variety that Transcendence can uh, take. And this starts out with a laptop computer. Now, the jump from a laptop computer to Transcendence probably seems somewhat unlikely, but that's half the point here. Now, I'm sitting in front of this, comp this laptop, and it, uh, this was a few years ago, and I had a Toshiba Tekra and it had a green track point, you know, for moving the cursor around. And, but in the dream, it was red. So I knew it wasn't my computer, and I should have become lucid. I should have thought, this is unusual, me using somebody else's computer. Uh, and I should have done a reality check and became lucid. Now, if you don't know already, and this is important to know, and this is off the topic of tra transcendence a little bit, but there is a conspiracy in your dreams. And there is uh, it's actively working against you all the time to keep you from becoming lucid. It's like there's a trickster there that's just sitting around and he's a genius and he's thinking up plausible explanations for anything that happens in your dream that might cause you to question whether you're dreaming or not. So in this case, I'm looking at this little rubbery eraser head type track point. It's the wrong color. And I'm sure I got an explanation like, well, mine must be in the shop. Or, or something like that. Now that's not particularly creative in that case, but there is some just really ingenious things and I want you to start treating it like a game, like you're in a battle of wits with this trickster in your mind. Because otherwise you're just going to get frustrated. You're going to wake up and think, you know, damn, I should have, you know, I should have caught that, I should have become lucid. It's better to make it fun and wake up and say, you know, that was pretty clever, that was ingenious. You know, you outwitted me this time, I'll get you next time. It's a, it's a healthier approach, and I think it's beneficial, generally speaking. Now, back to the dream. This laptop is in front of me. I'm not lucid, so you can have transcendent dreams when you're not lucid. And uh, it, had a, it was black, the screen, and it, uh, a little progress meter was running along the bottom, so I knew that uh, uh, it was booting. And then a screen suddenly appeared and said, how would you like light to appear? never saw that screen before, and I uh, had these little thumbnails. So I start scrutinizing these thumbnails, which is, was difficult to do. It's a little, about, a little bit like reading text in a book in a dream. It's, it can be really difficult because things are so you know, fluid, I guess you could say. And anyway, while I was pondering which lighting effect to pick, because it had like outside light and inside light and daylight and, you know, uh, uh, lights at night. And anyway, as I'm, you know, pondering these, this one thumbnail over to the left started flashing at me and got my attention. And it was the kind of flash, you know, if, this, if you're driving and the sun hits the bumper of a car in front of you and you get, like momentarily get blinded, it was that kind of a flash. And, uh, and it kept happening. So I looked and in the thumbnail was a little cumulus cloud and the sun was kind of poking its head around the edge of the cloud and kept, you know, uh, you know throwing this light at me. So anyway, I selected that. No sooner did I select that as the way I want light to appear than the whole, than the laptop in front of me, the whole thing just began to melt and suddenly morphed into a fleshy human heart. And it made itself just enough to look like a valentine so I knew it was a heart. And it was a fleshy organ. But I didn't even really have time to hardly grasp that when the whole thing just burst into flames. And, and then they weren't... Uh, uh, yellow and red and orange like flames are, it was a rich, like royal violet, uh, purple, and this pure, pure white. So this white, this white and violet uh, fire is just whipping around in front, in front of me. Then I'm looking at this, conf this beautiful conflag conflagration and and if that wasn't enough, around from behind it came this like series of capital letters moving around, like, the, like an advertising sign on the side of a building. And anyway, it came around, these letters 
right in front of this this stunning fire and I looked and it said I am come now now for Christians I think I am come they know that that's a you know from Jesus and he also uh, said you know I am the way the truth and the life and and uh, I am the open door and uh, various I am statements and those I am statements uh, well the I am has been used in other spiritual activities and traditions and it's always kind of interested me because it's kind of pure and simple the I am thing and so that's probably where that came from in terms of day residue I mean I did have a background of I am a little you know somewhat and so that's I'm sure that that's where that came from now I do want to say one negative thing about transcendence well I take that back. There is nothing negative to say about the transcendent dreams. Nothing. Uh, what I was going to say is that, you know, even though I've had transcendent dreams uh, periodically over the years and they never cease to uh, make me grateful, uh, they haven't made me rich. They haven't kept me from getting sick. They didn't keep me from. Uh, a few too many years of serious alcoholism, they don't solve the problems of life. But they do refresh and are very invigorating for the spirit. So they're well worth pursuing and they give insights. So anyway, now my clue on how to achieve transcendence is, you notice this dream said, how would you like light to appear? Head toward the light in your dreams. Head toward more brilliant light. If you're in a dark forest, head toward a, a, a meadow or a field. If you're, uh, uh, if it's a cloudy day, look for a break in the overcast. If you're flying and there's a sunset or a sunrise, head toward the light. And just always head to more areas of brilliance and light. And the same goes for your transcendent dark dreams. Uh, because you can also move toward them by, for instance, walking into a deep forest, looking for a cave or a mine or a well, or, or, or walk down some steps into a, a dark basement. And that'll, now these dreams won't be as pleasant, admittedly, but they will be equally rewarding, believe me. And, uh, and, and I don't think there's any esoteric reason why this, why this is true. I, you know, throughout our life, you know, light's associated with God and bliss and angels and all that stuff. And darkness is associated with all the bad stuff. So in your unconscious mind, that's all there. So if you head toward dark places in dreams or head toward light places, your unconscious mind tends to dish those associations up. And we'll get more into associations and really interesting things like homologous variants and some really cool stuff is down the road a bit. So uh, anyway, uh, right now... Uh, you can start working toward uh, transcendence. Keep an open mind. Don't be too rigid. Go, go, go with it. Let the dream unfold. Make good choices. And those choices will become easier as time goes on. So uh, this is the first step in something that's really beneficial for all of us. And that is uh, coming to terms and reconciling our opposites.